Later this morning, this sexual assault case against five men will begin in London, Ontario. The case stems from an assault on one woman in a hotel room in 2018. Statistics show that police investigations, the court system, and media coverage can be challenging for victims in sexual assault cases. Victims are often re-traumatized by telling their story multiple times and when they face things like disbelief, victim blaming, and disempowerment. Joining us this morning to look at how to best handle these cases is Shannon Maroney. She's a trauma therapist and author and a repeat guest here on Your Morning. Welcome back. Thanks, Henry. First of all, how difficult will these next steps? So we're starting at day one. What happens for a victim on day one and how challenging will these next steps be? Well, victim on day one in a high profile case like this is going to be very, very on edge and probably expecting a great amount of vitriol, one of the worst fees of victimhood um, online and, and whatnot. Nobody knows her or anything about her. So she in, in the media can come across as two-dimensional or even one-dimensional, whereas the uh, accused in this case are multi-dimensional, in fact. So I think it's a, a time of incredible tension and anxiety. Will she need to appear today? Uh, she does not need to appear today as far as, I, as I'm aware. What are some of the main obstacles that can cause re-traumatization as this case progresses? Lots of people saying it could take years. Yes, unfortunately it is likely to take a, a average criminal case uh, two to three years. She's already come a very long way in this journey. It's already been five days since what I might imagine. I don't know her, but many victims would say one of the worst days of their entire lives. Uh, and so there, it's incredibly taxing because if you think about it, the criminal justice system is really about uh, the state versus the accused. It's not about the victim. And so in many ways, victims are kept around the periphery of, of a crime and they're only used by the justice system to help achieve a conviction or influence sentencing. And there's very little, if any, support that they will receive at all. So there's enormous amount of reliving, recounting trauma, uh, and, and then bearing the, uh, the shame and the stigma of this having happened. Mentioning that, I, you know, I, I was reminded of a conversation we've had before, and I think this was during the Nygaard trial, where victims will often have told their story and had to retell this story at least five times before it even gets to court. At least, at, at least, for sure. And every time you tell it, you're back in, in the place where it happened, you're black, back in those emotions. Um, and the other thing is, you're not just telling the story to a, a warm and, and listening and understanding audience. When you're telling it in court or telling it to the police or lawyers or you know anyone else, uh, there's an, a great amount of scrutiny. Mm -hmm. So there's that, I need to prove myself, the shame, why, the, the kinds of questions that most victims ask themselves, why was I there, if only I, if only this, um, you know, and, and that, as a therapist, I always encourage people to remember that no matter what you did, what decision you might have made uh, that put yourself, put you in whatever position or place, never justifies what then happened at all. One of the things I've learned from you in covering these kinds of stories is that uh, oftentimes when they're brought up a lot in the news and we see them a lot, there is a celebrity component. And there is a bit with this case as well. And to remind people that it's not about the celebrity, it's about the accusation. That's right, exactly. So um, I think, again, that's the way that we talk about victims is also to remember, we, we better to use terms like now that there are actual charges, that we say that she stated or that these are charges rather than that these are mere allegations. Mm -hmm. um, and that still keeps within and, and honors the innocent until proven guilty of our Canadian court system. Mm -hmm. And also a reminder that it's police that press charges. That's right, exactly, exactly. That proving my earlier point about the state, it's been about the state. Um, and so then other things that we can just remember to do as individuals watching the news is that to know that this person who has uh, come forward with these accusations uh, had to be incredibly brave, incredibly strong after enduring what she describes or has described to, to, the, uh, to the justice system so far, police, an absolutely grueling and humiliating uh, night uh, uh, that has affected her, I'm certain, every day since. Uh, uh, Shannon, I want to thank you for coming back on your morning. I imagine we'll have you. more conversations as the trial continues. Thanks for That's being great. here today. Thanks, Emery. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.